Welcome to Context Free. And like many of you, I get software projects stuck in my heart and in my head sometimes. And one that I've had in my head for some years, but haven't started hacking at much until recently in my spare time, is a WebAssembly and WebGPU based application runtime. So it would be sort of like a fantasy console, but with modern capabilities for everything. That's sort of the idea. And WebGPU is the successor to WebGL. Chrome recently shipped it to Mac and Windows in Chrome 113. It's a working draft spec at the W3C with other people involved beyond Google, such as Apple and Mozilla, and is designed to give modern GPU capabilities to the web or to native applications. Both Mozilla and Google are working on web GPU implementations, including a header file for use from native applications that have nothing to do with the web at all. The idea is that if you have a spec that not only works for JavaScript, but also works for native apps, it might be a nice cross-platform way to get access to modern GPU capabilities for compute or for graphics. These are targeting things such as Direct3D 12, Metal, or Vulkan. Now the thing is, as long as you have a cross-platform GPU capability, it'd be nice to be able to have cross-platform binaries as well. And one way to do this is through WebAssembly. And there are multiple fast WebAssembly engines out there, such as WasmTime or Wasmer or more. For my project, I ended up going with Wasmer after a very simple test comparing WasmTime and Wasmer. I found that Wasmer was compiling slightly faster and had slightly smaller binaries and called that good enough and went with it. Now the thing is, I don't really know how to do GPU programming very well. So I went through this WebGPU C++ guide that shows how to use WebGPU.h to write WebGPU apps. And here they're building to native binaries, but I want a WebAssembly or WASM runner. So you can pick up a .wasm file and just run it outside a browser and have all the modern coolness. Now, ideally this would run in a browser as well, but I haven't worked on that part yet. Let's take a look at some code. And actually, maybe even before code, let's see the demo. Here we've got a rotating pyramid like in the other page I saw from the tutorial. And I'm not having to go in a circle. I had that in a previous version. Instead, I have keyboard control just to prove that I can have an interactive application. And my output WASM file right now is about 9K in size. The runner is about 23 megabytes as a single binary and compresses down to under 10 megabytes. So some of our key players here in the code are webgpu.h. So this file represents what Google and Mozilla and whoever else agree on. There are other functions you need outside of webgpu.h that aren't agreed on between Dawn and WGPU implementations. For now, I've focused on WGPU, but I'd actually like to support both versions out of the box. And this is a relatively large file, and I've only implemented some of it in my WASM runtime. I also have a header file for the specific things for my app engine. I've called it Taka for now. That's short for the volcano Takana at the Guatemala-Mexico border. But not knowing if it's appropriate for me to use that name, I shortened it to just Taka for now. And my prefix is just tack inside my C header file. So far, I have only a few keys defined. I have only a few kinds of events and have a very limited callback capability. But this is enough for basic functionality. I automatically kick off the window. So the window and interactive part are very lightweight code for Taka apps. But the web GPU side is very heavy. It's shockingly large amounts of code to do basic things. So here I've referenced that C++ tutorial, but I've implemented everything in Zig instead. And one of the nice things about Zig is you can still include C header files directly. And I can also compile easily to WASM with a simple command line. Another language that might be this straightforward is D, which also can just include C header files. Like I said, the amount of code to just set up and get WebGPU going is dramatically large. And from the purpose of my code here, I've pretended that I'm just on a web page. Again, the window's handled automatically here by Taka. And ideally, I do have a web browser implementation in the future. And ideally in the future, I also have things like true type font support built in and 2D canvas capabilities. WebGPU is the foundation to build other things on top of, at least from the graphical perspective. I'll have to figure out what else to do for audio and other things. But again, like I said, the sheer amount of code required to do basic WebGPU is amazingly large. And by having WebGPU.h capabilities, it means Third-party graphics libraries and game engines should be able to use Taka to run their apps. But I also plan to provide conveniences in Taka so that you don't have to jump through all these hoops 
if all you're doing is writing simple code to get graphics going. But for now, you've got to do most of the stuff the hard way. And you can't do much in WebGPU without shaders, where shaders are programs that get compiled down to run directly on your GPU. You can see great examples of these at shadertoy.com. And it's pretty amazing the kinds of things you can do. And at shadertoy.com, they're using a dialect called GLSL, as opposed to WGSL that's part of the WebGPU spec. And I'm also just embedding the WGSL shader code directly into my WASM file. And I don't even have a minifier, so all these comments go straight into the WASM file. So if we go crazy and just load up the binary in Vim, we can see here that some of our size is just referencing the names of the WebGPU functions. And if we also dig around here, we'll find, again, the shader source directly in line. I looked at compiling the shader to Spear V binary, but it actually made it bigger instead of smaller. Apparently Spear V is not as efficient as Wasm is in byte size. So I'm hoping to find some kind of WGSL minifier to help get this stuff down. Because again, I'm currently sitting at almost already 9K because of the amount of code you need to interface to WebGPU and because of including the raw source comments included of the WGSL file. It does compress down to about half this size. Anyway, here's additional support code beyond what we saw previously just to get WebGPU going. And I also have my data just as zig arrays here for that pyramid shape. Now, in terms of how we build it, I could use a build.zig, but instead I chose just to use a command line. That's all it takes to build my WASM binary. I do convert to the watt text format, so I can look at that if I want to. And I use wasmop to shrink it a tiny bit. And this here is just looking at the text version of the optimized wasm. And the overall script I have that both builds the zig example and builds my runtime in Rust, and then runs the example is right here. I first build the zig, then I build the Rust, then I take a look at the sizes, so I can scroll back in my terminal and see how big things are getting, and then I run things. I say taka run some wasm file, and that's all it takes. And again, to take a look at the size here, we see this runner is 23 megabytes self-contained. So let's take a look a little bit at the Rust code behind the scenes. I'm using the wInit library to make and run my windows, and I'm loading whatever wasm file I was given. And then I have a whole bunch of functions registered here for implementation. And I'm not gonna go into the details of how I made it work, and I probably have not done things super correctly. I had to jump through some various hoops to make Wasmer happy. I found that interfacing to Wasm through JavaScript, such as in my last video, to be much more straightforward than this. But approximately still here, I'm just mapping string function names to Rust function implementations. And I also have a very simple implementation of fdwrite, so you can print in a WASI compliant way from your applications. However, I find invoking this kind of mechanism from Zig increases the binary size quite a bit. So I usually don't have that happening from the Zig side. And I might consider more WASI support in the future, but I have to be careful about that. I want this app runtime to be very secure, like no network communication by default, for example, and only sandboxed storage. I want it to be so you can just navigate around Taka apps and run them and feel pretty safe that they're not gonna damage your system. So I've implemented all those WebGPU functions in this webgpu.rs file, and I do a fair amount of printing out of the rarely called functions just to see what's happening as it's going. If we look through here, we see some of these printouts along the way. Sometimes we see memory addresses. Sometimes we see things that look really suspicious. And that's because some of the things that are seen as pointers from the zig side are very simplified pointers from how I provide them through the Wasm engine. Though zig or any other language that might be compiled to Wasm here would see this texture as a pointer. For me, it's actually an index into an array of pointers to textures. So even though I have a bunch of unsafe code in here using the WGPU native implementation, which works directly with pointers, the safety levels are relatively high because I don't let you have arbitrary pointers. I have a bounds checked array of textures where the only kinds of pointers that can be in that array are pointers to textures. And for now, I don't actually even reuse slots. 
if you destroy a texture, I just set that entry to null. So at the moment, I technically have a memory leak thing if you keep deleting and creating new textures as you go. But it also means once you've destroyed a texture, you'll never see that particular pointer again. So there's no such thing as dangling references in the current implementation I have here for these kinds of things. But the fact that I can just leverage the WGPU native implementation and get the right semantics without much effort is really handy. Still, I had to jump through lots of hoops to figure out how to do anything that's going on here. And I've probably done some of it in very poor ways. Fundamentally, the internals of everything I'm doing here are managed by something I'm calling a system. And so for example, here's that vector of textures. I also have a window. And for some things, I actually have singletons. You currently can't create two separate surfaces for your web GPU app. And I may or may not keep it this way in the future if I keep working on this. But again, any pointers from the app side are actually going through a variety of specific entries in this struct or array items inside of this struct. They aren't really freeform pointers. So that should greatly increase the safety of the system here. And then finally, I also have an implementation for the window event side of things. And this is what's gonna enable also the interactive app side of stuff. There's a lot more to do here. The fact that you can write arbitrary native code, compile it to Wasm, invoke a fair amount of the web GPU capabilities. I'm still lacking some things for full texture support. I don't have instancing or multi-command buffers or a variety of other stuff that needs to get implemented. Haven't done compute shaders yet at all. But I feel like it's a pretty good start. It's actually far enough along that you can actually write interactive applications with arbitrary geometries and shaders and arrow key input. So let's see a demo again. And I have full screen support as well. I'll probably continue to keep that controlled from the outside. I might even try to do things like general support for pausing your application. And who knows, maybe I could even do things like persisting the running state of it. I'm not sure. I'll have to dig into what works or doesn't work as I go along. And demos in languages other than Zig would also be nice. But if you want to go take a look at it today, and I'll include a link in the description, you technically can already write arbitrary interactive web GPU apps up to the certain capability level of what's supported here. And I hope this has been fun. And I hope to actually continue working on this project in the future. And anybody who wants to help out, feel free to stop by. Bye, y'all.